Good afternoon, folks. Scott here at Wattsway Farms. Thanks for tuning in for another farm video. Aren't those just some cute little piglets? I'm telling you, those things have really grown. They are, I guess, oh, tomorrow they will be one month old. And, man, they are growing like little weeds. I'm shocked at just how fast they're growing. But anyway, today's video is not about pigs. It's actually about chickens. And chickens are something that we have never had on the farm before but we have made the decision that we are going to do pasture raised meat birds this uh this year for sure we may add laying hens and that's still up in the air and we're also considering uh pasture uh turkeys as well probably just for a thanksgiving batch but anyway but growing up i had chickens i didn't grow up on a farm I grew up a more, what you could say, a homestead. We always had a big garden. We had chickens, we had turkeys, we had rabbits, we had guinea hens, so a lot of small fowl. Now, there was nothing pasture raised about it. I don't even know if that was a thing. We're talking, what, 30, 35 years ago uh, that I was doing this. And I'll be honest, I didn't, in retrospect, I don't know that I enjoyed having chickens uh, growing up. They were, you know, we had a a big chicken coop for them um and there was no rotation and all that so we'll have to say i'm a little apprehensive about the chickens now the turkeys i enjoyed the rabbits i absolutely loved uh the gardein uh i loved as well and you know as you get older and you you reflect on you know the older i get the more i reflect on my childhood memories and in looking back on all that, I'm often wondering if I'm interested in this kind of more small farm kind of lifestyle today because of that upbringing that I kind of had on that somewhat of a homestead environment. Both my parents worked outside the home, but we still had that, you know, that, that homesteader type lifestyle. And I'm wondering if we you know because i was very interested in rabbits i remember and but i don't remember if i was interested in the the animals because my parents were or if my parents were just interested in it because i was and they were trying to support my kids my parents oh uh, you know we're always that's one of my fondest memories of just how supportive of whatever activity me and my brothers wanted to get into um they were very supportive of so anyway so today we're building a chicken brooder uh i'm actually it's said february 19th and we're not expecting the, the first uh chicks until april so i'm actually for maybe once uh fairly far ahead of the game um we'll see but anyway let me show you what we're doing and i hope you stick around and find some, something useful out of this So unlike my build videos that I've done in the past, I'm not going to do quite as much detailed step-by-step -step on this one. And the reason being is I'm following a set of plans. You know, normally I'm a DIYer and I kind of figure it out as I go, a lot of farmer engineering. But on this one, I scoured the internet for different plans and ideas. And I came across a uh, chuck at sheridan park farms if you haven't checked out his videos uh he's got a nice pretty very successful youtube channel uh informative uh videos uh highly recommend you check it out but he had some plans that for the brooders that he built and he's actually selling them that are not expensive they're four or five dollars a piece i forget maybe only three dollars i think they were like 4.99 or 3.99 i forget but you know super cheap um and that's what i'm following now i'm not 100 percent sure that Chuck actually drew these plans out and put them up for sale, or if he just scoured the internet and found them, and and now is you know saving them and selling them from his site. The interesting part is you know it clearly says free chicken brooder plans, but these very much cost me, except four dollars I think it was. But regardless, um, maybe this will be more of a kind of review of his plants. I'll show you the kind of the parts and the tools and all that, but all the individual measurements and whatnot that go into it. Uh, if you want that, you're gonna need to buy his plants. Now, I will put a link uh, to these plans 
down in the description. Uh, again, if you're decide to build these i recommend you support help support fellow farmers and like i said spend the four bucks on them or if you can google free chicken brooder plants and maybe find them if that is indeed where they come from again i don't know um all the power to you i guess so we'll start with the wood that you're going to need it's actually pretty simple uh you're going to need two of these half inch uh sheets of pressure treated um plywood now i guess pressure treated not pressure treated i don't know i'm using pressure treated these are gonna be outside mrs Wattsway farms does intend to come behind me and paint them but i'm still using pressure treated you're gonna need two eight foot um two by fours these are actually some i had left over from my jordan green inspired um pig farrowing hut you're going to need eight of, I mean, yeah, one, two, three, four, eight of these eight foot two by twos. Again, pressure treated. And I can tell you, um, these, I mean, at least at the Lowe's where I buy them, uh, man, I had to go through a bunch to get eight that weren't all bent up and crooked like a dog's leg. Now, an optional piece you're going to need is some vinyl um, to go down in the bottom. It's 12 foot wide and uh lowe's sells it by the linear foot so i bought basically three foot because the inside of the brood will be three foot by six foot when i'm done so i'll be able to cut it in half and i can actually make uh this will be enough for two brooders all right and that's it for the wood uh not a whole lot of wood goes into this now let me show you the hardware and the tools that go into this project Okay, here's the hardware you're gonna need. You need a four inch bolt with some washers and a wing nut uh, for the prop. You need four hinges, a couple of hook and eye bolts. These are probably optional. I'm gonna use them uh, to help make sure the lids stay closed. Some fasteners for the roofing material, uh, staples, and some two and a half inch, one and a quarter inch screws as well as the plans actually call for wood glue. I've never been a big fan of wood glue, but I do like uh, roofing nails. I mean, sorry, liquid nails. You're also gonna need some sort of, I guess, roofing material for the door or the top, uh, whatever you call it. The actual, the picture in the plans has like a clear, I guess, like poly type uh, roofing panel and guess that'll be okay It'd be all right during the winter but then since we're going to be running brooders of this through pretty much the entire uh summer spring and summer my concern is it just get too hot down here in lower alabama um you know we get we get quite hot and we stay hot and i just think that would actually get too hot on the chick so i went with galvanized uh on this you're also gonna need some hardware cloth uh for the vents to keep the the critters that may want to do your chickies harm uh, out. And, you know, if I was building this in a inside, like to go inside my barn or something, which, you know, I don't have, wish I had a barn, fully, fully thought I'd have a barn by now, but, you know, it's not the lumber prices that's holding me up now. It's, I just can't find anybody that'll want to come out and help me build a barn. I'm not the young whippersnapper I used to be and working up high because you know the center of my barn and my plans I want the two-story there for extra storage and I just don't want to be up there by myself doing that but anyway uh if I was building it inside I would use this hardware cloth uh for the lid as well just for extra ventilation but since my brooder will be outside and I need the solid roof I just want to go with the galvanized panel all right so here's the tools that you're going to need you're going to need a skill saw and you can't do the whole thing with a skill saw but there are a few angled cut so i've got the miter saw out uh, to cut those angles you're going to need a drill or driver or something for the uh, screws a staple gun i think actually those hand staplers would probably work but i'm gonna uh, go with that uh, a tape measure uh, i use a chalk line for cutting plywood it just means it's easier to do the straight line you're gonna uh a door jig kit i actually didn't have one of these uh it was only like 20 bucks so i figured it was something worth adding to my uh tool collection a speed square 
um, a big square. I use that for when I start assembling the, um, assembling it to make sure that everything kind of goes together somewhat square. Various um, clamps and then some sort of cutter to cut the hardware cloth. And then I guess if you're using uh, sheet metal as well or roofing tin as I am, you'll need something to cut the tin. Now what I use, I don't use this on tin. I've got another skill saw with an old blade turned around backwards and right, wrong, or different. That's just the way I grew up cutting tin. That's the way that I did it. Now the instructions come with a very good parts list and a tool list. Now I can't tell you some of these tools that they called for are not on there. It's just from, I've read through the entire plans and I know that this is stuff I'm gonna do. Now what I'm gonna do now, and normally in this part of a, my build, I would start cutting and assembling as I go, but because I actually have these plans, it gives me the cut list. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get everything cut and then we'll check back in then. So it's now actually three weeks later from the, what well, is February 19th, I think it was, when I started this video. It's now mid-March and, you know, I really thought these brood would be up and ready by now. I was ahead of schedule, but things come up that you don't anticipate, priorities change, and, you know, as they say, life happens. So now, we're still got a couple weeks though. I think our chicks show up in, March I mean beginning of April so I think it's still got some time and I think the way Mrs. Watsway Farms is order them is where we'll get a steady staggered batch uh, of chickens you know so they go to brooder to the tractor uh, to the processor um, etc so and in addition to it now jumping forward three weeks you know we should be getting real close to springtime we've had a I guess a weird freak cold snap come through as I pretty much I suspect everybody in the U.S. has and it is it is just downright cold it's cold it's windy it's just not a pleasant day today I'm actually a little concerned it was I got into the almost 80 degrees I think in last week and now it's 24 I think with a wind chill it's going to get even colder tonight and I'm a little worried about my uh, peach uh, trees. We have two peach trees, pretty mature, that are covered in blooms and was hoping for a really good crop. Um, and I don't know if this is going to impact it or not. But anyway, let's get back to work. You know, another thing that's happened in the last three weeks is the world has really gone upside down with everything that's going on over in Ukraine. And, you know, we're feeling the impact of it here. Prices are already um going up let's say and now they have gone through the roof and regardless of that one thing i've always been kind of keen on is when i'm following plans and build is the amount of waste and so i thought i'd share with you also from the part list uh or on this i got all the cuts done and this is all the waste i mean not too bad a couple pieces of plywood two buys uh sheet metal so all in all, not a uh, terrible waste pile. Of course, most of this I'll save. Just you never know. The little pieces, obviously, all along. But this will save. I do know I need it. And something else I'm doing because it is so cold and windy. And we got my table set up here inside. We call this the tractor shed. I keep the tractor, the ATV, and you know just other stuff just to keep it somewhat out of the, out of the elements. So here's all our cuts um, that have been waiting patiently for the last almost month. And I've got my instructions back out. Uh, so we're ready to start assembling.
So that was a whole bunch of pocket hole drilling that had to be done on these. And it took a while. This thing, and I'm not going to go a lot of detail, I've never used it before. I did practice on a couple pieces first. And there is, I guess, two of them in a spacer, so you could do two at the same time. But because this wood is so narrow, when I used both of them, it was just, it was too far apart. So I do them one at a time. Not my, you know, some of them are a little off, but I think for the most part, this is going to work. So hopefully now, um, I can start assembly. Uh, I get everything laid out. Uh, maybe this will go a little bit quicker. So what a difference a day makes. It's actually the next day now. I didn't get as much done on that brooder yesterday as I thought. I was planned on finishing it, but uh, I tell you, the weather just was not cooperating. I've always said one of the great things about this farmer lifestyle is that you get to work outside. But I have to say one of the bad things about this farmer lifestyle is you have to work outside and yesterday between the cold and the howling wind um just it real quickly became not worth it to me to stand there and suffer through um building this brooder so <clears throat> i switched gears to activities that weren't quite so stationary once you got around and got moving still wasn't great but um it didn't it wasn't terrible either so today it's still actually cold it was in the low 20s when we woke up this morning but it's warming up i just checked the weather app and the feels like temperature is 33 so we're just above freezing but it's supposed to get up to like 55 degrees today so the sun is shining the sky is clear so i think it's going to be a much better day to finish this brooder i've moved everything out of the tractor shed into the sun so that i can just take it all in while i'm working on it so let's get back to work So, beginning to take, take shape now. Got the bottom in. Um, one thing I will, I guess, point out is that with these, I've never done these pocket hole uh, screws before. I was impressed with just how well it grabs. But one thing to note is you want to make sure that when you're drilling it, you're going into the grain. If I'd flipped these over and gone this way, um, not nearly as strong of a hold. So I know I said I wasn't going to show a lot of the detailed measurements since this is a paid plan, but I've run into a I guess an error in the plans and I figured I'd share it with you in case you do buy these. You notice here the making a door attach the door long stretchers to the door short stretchers and it clearly shows the short stretchers on the end. I don't know how well it's going to show up on the video going to the outside but these long stretchers are 30 32 and a half inches so 32 and a half inches and then these center stretchers the center braces if you will that are only were per the cut instructions were 28 and a half so if these are if this is 32 and a half with one and a half there and one and a half there that means a 28 and a half is too short its knees were missing an inch right there so what i've done is i'm going to take it apart and i don't know if you can see because of the sun this blue line that's the 28 and a half inch mark from this inside how it needs to be so i'm gonna take these corners off 
uh, cut it back to here and reassemble it and then truthfully it really is going to fit better that way anyway because then this will line up uh, better with the end. So I want to point out what I think is a another error in these plans in case you buy them um, and build this you'll kind of save a couple extra steps so it only calls for these two center braces and i sure hope this is showing up and it clearly says to space them one foot ten inches end to end but if you do that so from here one foot ten inches would be here and then if i did the same thing on the other end one foot ten inches would be to here but what would happen would be then if you notice the center oh uh, would have nothing to attach to i mean i guess i could you'd overlap it and it would hold down but i just don't like that idea so what i did was i scooted it over just a little bit and then i added uh, a third brace here in the middle and what i did was i just kind of i like to overlap the end by about this much so i just laid all four pieces up here and then just kind of marked where it made most sense where i would be attaching them so that every piece um had like equal overlap and equal tie down um spots so hopefully this will work So the chicken brooder is now finally done. It's actually been a week and a half, I guess, since the last bit of footage. You know, as they say, life happens and nowhere is that more true than on a farm. Uh, all in all, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Um, you know, I added the... I don't know if this will show up in the shade or not, but I added a couple hooks right here just in case something decided it wanted to get in here. You scrap piece of wood uh, as a lid, and that's it in the open position. Added the linoleum down in the bottom, just like the instructions suggested uh, to help make it easier to clean. Now, I guess a little bit of feedback for those who may be considering building it theirself. Um, one thing the plan did not call for is anything right here. So um, another two by two probably would have sufficed, but I didn't have that. I didn't want to go all the way back to the to town. So I had a two by four that I cut to put there because otherwise this whole, the hinge, and the back weight of the lid is really just sitting on that little piece of plywood right there. Um, and I just don't think that's enough support. So I added that two by four all the way across the back. Um, another thing to note uh, on this hardwire cloth, um, I probably could have cut it, made it look a little prettier, but I don't know. I just cut a square and put it in there. But I didn't use a hand, like a little spring-loaded staple uh, gun. I used my pneumatic one with a little air compressor. And I didn't think about it. I don't even know if they make staples, but, you know, you're going through this half-inch plywood here. Um, so I had a bunch of staples sticking out all the way through. So I just took my little side grinder cutter and cut all those off um what other feedback oh the um the pocket jig um it called for that all over this and if i build another one of these and i probably will i'll probably still use it since i've got the jig now but i'm not going to use it everywhere it said like on these, these corners right here, I mean, it made a strong joint, but I couldn't, you see the wood split a little bit here, but it just, just would have been just as easy to pre-drill here on the end and screw it that way. Really, the only place I think 
that little pocket hole jig, whatever you call it, was down underneath this piece. There's a two by two here, and it screws in this way into the long side of this two by. So um, it kind of made sense uh, on that. So you get a nice flush front. But other than that, everywhere else you kind of just drill straight through kind of like I did here um also another thing I may have mentioned it earlier in the video but it's been so many weeks now is I had to add an extra support underneath here or else this middle sheet of tin wouldn't have had anything to hook to so again all in all I'm quite pleased with it now this size of this brooder actually determined how big our first order of chicks were going to be we've actually already ordered it's the end of march now march 27th to be exact our first order of chicks of 60 has already been ordered and originally i was thinking we'd only be able to do 30 but i've been reading joe salatin's book pasture uh poultry for profits i think same it's an old book written in 1993 so the income numbers seem underwhelming uh but again 1993 was a long time ago so obviously the cost of poultry has gone up since he wrote that but the fundamentals of the book i think are very good and in that book he says that for a brooder chick from zero or from hatching to the three weeks of age at 16 to 21 days when we looking at moving them out on pasture that a chicken only needs or a baby chick only needs half a square foot per bird so already did the math this is almost six foot by three foot not quite it's like 70 i think just a couple inches short of i'm sorry it is six foot wide uh it's just a couple inches short of 36 uh i think like 35 or whatever but anyway i did the math at 17 and a half square feet so based off of joe salatin's um numbers that's a 72 birds oh uh, and they can go in here i think that's kind of small but um i don't know we're gonna see so what we've done is we've ordered 65 chicks that are be hatched on april the 6th we'll pick them up that friday and i'll go in here and then i'm gonna build two of the john Saskovich chicken tractors that they'll go into there so that's about 30 roughly birds on each one we went just a, a couple over to keep the you know in case we lose a few so we'll end up hopefully with um 60 uh birds to process in eight weeks and in every five weeks after this first one we're going to get that many again with a thought being that you know they've got three weeks in here five weeks in a chicken tractor so every five weeks the chicken two chicken tractors i'm going to build will um come available so um again so all in all um like i said very pleased with this it was probably worth the four dollars i spent uh on these plans uh total cost not too bad probably 250 bucks maybe um in parts and materials um i don't remember exactly but you know with the price of lumber and everything um it probably could have been a lot cheaper and you may have a lot of this laying around doing it even cheaper but i fully expect this thing to last many many seasons my hope is by next season you know maybe have two of these and then run double the birds and triple the birds you know and just really be able to scale our operation let's see what the demand is my current customer base of pork and beef that we've been selling to for a couple of years now very much have been inquiring and are very interested in chickens poultry uh pasture poultry uh so we'll see in about eight weeks if the orders start coming in so in the meantime uh if you like this video please give it a thumbs up give it a like check out my website whatswayfarms.com well actually our plaster poultry chicken you know within a that ups one day delivery for ground within troy alabama we're going to plan on probably shipping uh pasture poultry uh turkeys or chickens because it's just not it's not that pricey uh it's, it's if the you know the demand in my local market is less than what we have so give me a subscribe if you haven't already uh it's greatly appreciated and 
hope to see you back here soon in the upcoming weeks we will i will do another video of when the baby chicks come in uh we've already got all the stuff to go in the brooder the heating plate the waters and feeders and all that so we'll do a walkthrough on all that soon so see you back here soon thanks